I built this powerful Sword Soul Yu-Gi-Oh deck on a budget? My guy, I gotta tell you, if you have zero cards for this deck, it's gonna cost you about $80, but if you have the staples, under 50, let's go! Sword Soul also has some secretly good cards that are amazing against this Yu-Gi-Oh meta. And today, I'm gonna be explaining to you why Sword Soul is one of the best budget decks in the game. Let's jump on in. All right, big dog. So one of the biggest selling points for Sword Soul is virtually one card synchro summons. And your toughest monsters in Sword Soul Moye allow you to help you set that up and gain resources. But in the grind game, Sword Soul Taie is the best card because it essentially is just straight a one card synchro summon without having to have resources in your hand. We already know in current Yu-Gi-Oh, one of the most important things is to be able to do your combo in as little cards as possible, meaning that the rest of your cards can almost be anything. And as you can see, Sword Soul as a strategy is naturally able to do that. So we complement that by trying to get into our cards as fast as possible with three copies of Incredible Ecclesia the Virtuous and three copies of Sword Soul Emergence. Now, before we get into the rest of this video, I actually wanna talk about a fantasy RPG with over 800 champions across 15 playable factions. Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is available for iOS, Android, and PC, and you can download the game for free using my QR code or the link down below and receive some amazing heroes. And as a special promotion, Raid Shadow Legends is actually giving away the Monkey King legendary Sun Wukong for free. I like Monkey King because he is a popular character from Chinese mythology and folklore. He's well known for his superhuman abilities and his intelligence, but also can be a trickster. He is easily one of the most craziest heroes on Raid Shadow Legends, and I've been having a ton of fun using him. There's also some crazy other things that you need to know about Raid Shadow Legends, and one of them is the Cursed City. The Cursed City is a crazy 100 stage event, and it even has stages where you need to take down two bosses at one time. My guy, dude! Then there's also Raid's Christmas Story, which is a holiday themed event where you can follow Sir Nicholas on a festive story. You can win crazy things like in-game items and even Amazon gift cards. So big dog, what are you waiting for? If you use my link or the QR code, you'll receive Light Sworn, and then upon level 15, you'll receive Juliana. Once you're in there, you can always find me under my clan. Go ahead and join so we can be legends together. These 11 cards are some of the most important cards for your deck because it gets your strategy going, but you also need power cards to be able to disrupt your opponent, and I think Sword Soul has a couple of power cards that are really good. One of them is Sword Soul Strategist Long Yuan. This card is actually incredible because it does summon a powerful synchro monster that is really good against some of the top strategies in the game. And no, it's not put on the floor. Now there is one problem with Sword Soul and it does revolve around your power card in Long Yuan and it's Nibiru the Primal Being. But fortunately enough, some of the best strategies in the game right now make Nibiru look like a terrible card. So not only are the top players in Yu-Gi-Oh dropping that card, it also allows us to play Sword Soul incredibly aggressive, which will win us a ton of game. To complement Long Yuan with our other bomb Yu-Gi-Oh card, Sword Soul Blackout is still mandatory. You normally don't want to destroy monsters in this particular format, but being able to banish Blackout to get a token is sometimes amazing. But now we're gonna get into the card that I think is crazy right now. Ironically, this card was Sword Soul Iris, and I actually got my invite using that card at a tournament. This time around, this card is, it's just as fire into the format. I actually think the Abyss Dragon Sword Soul is a crazy Yu-Gi-Oh card right now. And what the Abyss Dragon Sword Soul does is that it can only be special summoned by a worm monster effect, but anytime a monster is banished, it can summon itself from the hand or graveyard to the side of the field. Also, when it is special summoned, you can banish one field spell card on the field as well as a monster on the field in Graveyard. This card is actually incredible against the best strategies in Yu-Gi-Oh! Fire King plays Fire King Island and often needs cards like Fire King Sacred Grunix or Legendary Ponix in their graveyard to be able to gain their important effects. Rescue Ace HQ is really powerful for the deck now that Airlifter is limited, Labyrinth Labyrinth, and a potential furniture card in the graveyard. It's good against Monadium because all they do is play field spells. But one of the best things about this card is that there is a ton of banishing going on because of SP Little Knight. Whether if you guys can afford one yourself or if your opponent is playing one, if they trigger the effect of SP Little Knight, 
and there's a filled spell, there can be a price to play with the Abyss Dragon Sword Soul. This card just so happens to be crazy good against most Yu-Gi-Oh strategies in the meta and is ridiculously easy to summon, especially when you consider what are the best hand traps in cards that are being used in the game. I would genuinely consider playing this card if I were you guys. It's actually incredibly powerful, but moving on to the cards that actually help us with our consistency, there's three copies of Pot of, Pot of Desires. There's three copies of Pot of Desires, almost inconsequential if we banish any of our cards. Even sometimes losing the Abyss Dragon Sword Soul doesn't mean anything because we get two free cards or bait the Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. The Tingyi lineup pretty much stays the same. There's three copies of Ashina, two copies of Vishuda, and two copies of Adara. There's also one copy of Tingyi Spirit Shathana because this card is really, really important for the next card that I'm about to show. As you already know, we are in a hand trap format and some of the best cards in the game is infinite impermanence and effect favor. Sword Soul can legitimately struggle against those two strategies if it's not prepared, but fortunately enough, I came prepared with this deck. There's three copies of Heavenly Dragon Cycle in this particular deck. If you think about it, a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh strategies actually have quite a few ways to dodge infinite impermanence. For Fire Kings, it's Fire King Circle. For Rescue Ace, it's Emergency. And even for Unchained, there's Shivara. You have to have a card that instills fear to the opponent when they're using those type of cards. And I think three copies of Heavenly Dragon Cycle is correct because you get to tribute your Taie or Morye and get Shathana and still be able to play while your opponent lost a card out of their hand. It also can be used to get you follow-up, which is really, really important from time to time. And now for the hand interruptions here, there's actually quite a lot, and it's because Sword Soul can play a ton without any repercussions. There's three copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, one of the best hand traps in the game. Then there's three copies of Infinite Impermanence. Now the next card I think is the best hand trap in the game right now, and that is three copies of DD Crow. If you keep in mind all of those strategies that I said, all of them get hit by DD Crow. I think Sword Soul is one of the very few decks that can get away with using DD Crow inside of the main board because it turns even the not so powerful matchups into crazy good matchups because this card can get rid of so many threats. And ironically, there tends to be more and more interactions where DD Crow is just a powerful Yu-Gi-Oh card. I would strongly consider it if I were you and your Sword Soul deck. The last hand trap that I'm playing is three copies of Effect Veiler, but Effect Veiler can feel really bad in this deck sometimes, so you could substitute it for three copies of Forbidden Droplet. I'm gonna leave that up to you. The extra deck consists of one copy of Better on the Floor, one copy of Shinging, and one copy of Sword Soul Sinister Sovereign. Out of all of these level 10 monsters, the best one is actually Sinister Soft. The weird thing about Yu-Gi-Oh right now is that there are a ton of face-up spell and trap cards that the opponent is using. If it's filled spells or if it's some other card, Long Yuan is incredibly good at checking that threat. Long Yuan also naturally checks monsters like Diabell Star, the Dark Witch, Catch Tira Fenrir, and the list goes on. This card is the reason why I think this deck is so good and is typically the level 10 monster that I think you should go into. After that, there's the standard two copies of Shishao, two copies of Boxia, one Draco Berserker, and one Adamantipator Risen Dragite. There's one copy of Yazi. Keep in mind, Yazi can actually summon the Abyss Dragon Sword Soul from your deck and trigger its effect. There's three copies of Monk of the Tingyi, and lastly is Shaman of the Tingyi, which can also trigger the effect of the Abyss Dragon Sword Soul. I'm not gonna lie, the extra deck is pretty basic for most Sword Soul players. For that last slot, you guys could play Xiao Feng. You could also play a Psychic in Punisher, and if you guys could afford it, you could play SP Little Knight because SP Little Knight also triggers the effect of the Abyss Dragon Sword Soul. But obviously for budget players, SP Little Knight is out of the question, so Psychic in Punisher, Xiao Feng, uh, there's even Ice Jade Jimmer. Those cards are also really, really good picks. All right, big dog, so a lot of people do this combo wrong, and I do think it is because of a fear of a card like Nibiru to Primal Being and stuff like that. But ultimately, if you're playing the Sword Soul deck, you gotta go balls to the wall. And if you wanna beat some of the top decks, you gotta take risk. Now, obviously, if you know your opponent has Nibiru, don't play into the Nibiru. But this is what you should be doing with this particular hand or a sequencing like this. I'll also be uploading some more test hands on my Patreon just as a special thank you to help me pay my editors and to show them what to do under other circumstances. So in this particular situation, we're gonna go ahead and normal summon Moye, reveal the Adara to be able to get a token to our side of the field, and then we'll use Long Yuan discarding the Worm Monster to get a second token to our side of the field. The reason why we do it this particular way is because let's say if we did fear Nibiru, we can then just make Baron the Floor right here as our fifth summon to protect ourselves. But let's say we don't. 
we're gonna go ahead and use Longyuan and our uh, token for a Synchro Summon into our Sinister Sovereign Xing Longyuan, burn our opponent for 1200, putting him at 6800. And then we're gonna use our Moye and our last token for the Shi Xiao. Now, this may not seem like a menacing board, but I'm telling you guys, it is the absolute bonkers against some of the best decks in the game. We're gonna use the effect of Moye as Chain Link 3, Xing Long Yuan as Chain Link 2, Shi Xiao as Chain Link 1. There's a rule to this, guys, and this is how you optimally play this. If you guys do not have a card to follow up, let's say if you don't have like Taya, if you don't have the Circle, or if you don't have Emergence, if you don't have any of these four cards in your hand, then go ahead and search Taya because Taya will allow you to normal summon and continue to play. Now, hypothetically, if you did have a card like Heavenly Dragon Circle into your hand, you would actually just search the Sword Soul Blackout. And I'm going to show you how this is going to work for the opponent. Oh, you also get the draw two cards. My apologies. So you're going to have five cards or uh, four cards back into your hand. So in this particular situation, we would be able to use the Xing Long Yuan to burn our opponent twice. They were at 6,800 because we burned with Long Yuan. Then they'd go down to 5,600. Then they'd go down to 4,400, meaning that the game was well within reach. We also get to use Xi Xiao to be able to banish uh, Long Yuan to negate a monster effect. Then we can use Sword Soul Blackout, targeting our Xi Xiao and two of our opponent cards. But in that same chain, we'll use our Heavenly Dragon Circle, tribute off our Xi Xiao to be able to grab a Sword Soul Taya. So now we can actually get our follow-up. We can destroy two cards on our opponent's side of the field, negate a monster on our opponent's side of the field, and also banish two of their cards and inflict an additional 2400 damage it's actually really crazy how sword soul can be when it gets going and that's all that i have for today's video also remember go ahead and use my qr code or the download link for raid shadow legends i hope you're having an amazing day and i'll catch you on the next one